Good morning, church. Today, just thought I'd follow up with my last video, talked a little bit about the church and how things have been going on in our world today, as far as all of the closures of things, in particular, the closure of the church. <clears throat> and again, you know, I just want to reiterate that, you know, God has given us power over evil spirits and of every disease. And, you know, if, if we indulge, I suppose, in all the drama that goes on, man, we're, you know, we're not doing what the will of God is. We are just going along with how things are going with everybody else and so forth. So just wanted to follow up with that. <clears throat> I know that, you know, in normal life, people do get fearful. You know, they have anxiety. I know that I, I do. There, there are times where we don't necessarily do the right thing or have the right responses initially. And, you know, as I believe, as I preach and as anybody else who preaches, I would like to think that we all preach with a sense of urgency because as we read scripture, we can see all of the urgency. Like we need to change now, today. Don't sit there and like procrastinate like normal life things. See, the faith is not designed. It's not a thing that you just kind of, you know, you have an elaborate plan and, you know, you do this and that and da da, -da. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ, first and foremost. And as you step into that relationship, you begin to learn things just like you would in any other occasion. If you begin a new job, you're learning all of the new tasks with your job, so on and so forth. You get into school. It's a step-by-step -step thing. You begin somewhere and you, you go on and on and on. Same thing, but in, in the utmost important way we get into a relationship with the Lord and we we are changed I will say always as I have said anyone touched by Jesus is not the same as they used to be so I am very much for discipline and really thinking about what God is calling us to do to you know a radical extent but not like an interpreted extent more like this is really serious the severity of it is indefinite and it's something that I, I feel the church is lacking as far as you know what's going on with today's world commitment is a big deal going on right now and and there's just a lot of struggles that people have with their own personalities with with how the culture is and I believe that that it's being brought into the church and also affecting the church leaders to the point that they're not preaching how they should most are more concerned about numbers than they are actually really preaching the Word of God and we, we also have to take into consideration the truth of the matter is that a lot of people walk around with a lot of guilty consciences and they make a lot of decisions based on those guilty consciences and, and they often, most often, deter from the truth and from God's word and, and they're not speaking truth, you know, because otherwise they would have to really condemn themselves if they were. So, first and foremost, through Jesus Christ, we can walk a righteous path. We can be righteous people. We do have our things here and there. But again, anyone touched by Jesus is not the same. So we're living a new life. Scripture says, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. If you have the same mindset and you're not transformed, then you're just kind of trying to add Christianity onto your life. You don't want to do that. Today's message really in my mind, I wanted to talk a lot about the fact that you know, we do go through these different things. We, we, we have anxieties, we have fears. And in Psalm, David is, is just pouring himself out. It, it's honestly a very beautiful book to read, the book of Psalm. It, it is very enlightening and very real. You know, a lot of us church leaders may come across as people who are indestructible, but 
the the truth of the matter is is that each of us has been called to go our way and to speak and we are all empowered by the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ and our faith in him solely through his power not our own and we want to convey that message to all of you that through him you too will receive power will receive peace and just have a completely different life than you've ever lived and I know that because it happened to me now one major thing about me as I speak I used to be one who preached the faith but I would be drunk with my friends talking to my friends about Jesus or high smoking pot telling my friends about Jesus which is completely contradicting exactly what the Lord wants and again I wasn't living a good lifestyle I was swearing left and right I mean I had you know I was running around with different girls and doing different things and you know stealing and, and all all the bad stuff that you can imagine you know I was doing it I never got into hard drugs or whatever but you know that doesn't really matter you know an addiction is an addiction and in the end it really ruins you and ruins the people around you point is is after I got delivered of an evil spirit that was in me I was very much demon possessed at one point after I got delivered I was brought to a point of absolute clarity I can't even describe to you how amazing it was but I did surrender everything to the Lord at that moment I gave it all all to him I didn't hold anything back and and I was completely transformed my mind I was completely different I didn't, I didn't even think the same I do not even think the same as I used to um, all of the childish acts I could finally see them as being childish rather than indulging in them and so you know, I say that to say that we are strengthened by the Lord, and the Holy Spirit, and even though we are saved, we do have our moments of fear, anxiety, doubt, and, and bad things initially. And so, you know, as much as I like to preach about the fact that we all should be at a point of obedience and trusting God and th this and that, I do want to bring up the fact that we do come we do come to places where we do have our doubts we do have our fears so i'm not saying that just because you have you may have had those doubts fears anxieties especially in our situation with this virus and all that you're not you know a bad person or something or, or it's not like you can't come back from it kind of thing the fact is in our relationship with god we all make mistakes scripture says we all fall short of the glory of god so this is not one of those things where all of a sudden we're christian now we do everything perfectly look at us we're awesome we are saved by the blood of Jesus and continually washed clean of the things that we do wrong as we go on our walk with Jesus it is not to say we don't make mistakes we definitely do you see that that's where the difference between a saint and a sinner comes you see once we are saved we're no longer sinners though we do sin scripture says that you know we don't sin intentionally or you know it's not like something that is habitual it's just something that happens you know I, I might screw up might say the wrong thing might do the wrong thing but the point is is that our faith is now where it belongs our faith is supposed to be is meant to be in God so we, we, we rely a lot on our own minds and we always try to rationalize things and make sense of everything because the things that we don't know, man, are the things that we fear the most for the most part or, or cause us the most concern when we don't know something. But, you know, you begin to have faith in God and, and you really come to the realization that whether you believe or not, you go through times of situations where you just don't know what's happening you know whether you're a believer or an unbeliever things happen that you are out of your control and you know from one minute to the next you have no idea what's going on or you might know but when we have faith in the Lord who can do everything we have a constant peace again we do go through those times of anxiety and fear and doubt but when we realign ourselves back 
where we belong and, and we look to God for the answers of things, or maybe just, maybe we just pour ourselves out to God like David did. You know, he sets us back up on our right path and, and we have that peace. We don't have to worry about things. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures from Psalm as they apply and I'm using my phone. I'm not. On, I'm not. I'm not doing a, an actual Bible, so I'm not going to thumb through pages. This might be faster. I don't know. I hope so. So first, I'll start out with Psalm 62, five through eight. It's yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. You know, it's just the absolute truth. David is, is proclaiming that God is everything in, in this particular passage here. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. That's the thing about the Old Testament. As you read, you see how people live their lives, and they just had this natural sense of trusting God. Whereas in this day and age, we're so far from it. We, we are so inclined to our own understanding, into discovery, into technology, into, you know, somebody has a PhD, so all of a sudden he's automatically correct at whatever assessment he has or whatever he says. Whereas, you know, you know, it's just, it's a completely different world now. Back in the Old Testament, you could see examples of people who live lives relying on God. Yeah, they had their own lives. They worked. They did th this and that. But God was number one in all situations. Whereas, again, today, we're always looking for the next loophole to get out of this or that situation. You see, when we align ourselves with God, we don't put ourselves in situations that get us caught up. In, and we don't have to act a certain way or... Um, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, we don't have to worry about our actions when we align ourselves with God. We just kind of do the right thing for the most part. Again, you know, it's not to say we don't make mistakes, but we we begin to do more blameless things, I suppose. Like if you make a mistake, it's more of a legitimate mistake than it is like you had this plan and, and you, you know, man, you really screwed up. You made the wrong choice, man. That wasn't good. It's more like, oh yeah, you know, you get a little correction here and there and you're on your way totally different and even a dishonest person loves an honest person you know because there's nothing nothing about an honest person uh, as far as having to deal with them that that's difficult other than the fact that they are convicted by your honesty but in that right there you might be helping someone so Another text, again, being applicable, Psalm 94, 19, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. You know, we go through times of anxiety. Man, I remember when I had to go through custody battle for, you know, my son, and I had to drive from where I live in Sonora down to the Bay Area because all of the court stuff was back in there. You know, that's 100 miles plus, and it's a couple hundred miles there and back, and you know, it's a lot of stuff, and each time I'd go and, you know, my son's mother wouldn't show up or something, and then the judge would prolong it, prolong it. You know, I'm thinking, man, if I didn't show up, you would have cut my head off, you know what I mean? But, you know, the point being is, is, is man, there's, there's stuff that happens that it's going to, you know, it's going to get you one way or the other. It, it, you know, we're not perfect people because we believe we just believe in a, in a perfect God who can make things right. And I mean everything right. With this disease or virus, whatever's going on, in Jesus' name, we have the power to touch people and heal them completely. Whatever it is. And it's because of God. In every situation, every circumstance that we have, it's always Him who steps in in some way, shape, or form and turns the situation around or gives us clarity to whatever it is that we've been in the fog about. 
David here in Psalm and, and many of the psalmists, all of the psalmists, talk about how much God has done for them and not having to be specific, but just giving God the glory for all the things that he's accomplished in their lives. That's what we need, church. That's what we need to do. That's how we need to, to live our lives. That's how we need to behave in a manner that really exalts God constantly instead of relying so much on the stuff that we think we know or the stuff that somebody else who is a professional and they think they know. We spend way too much time relying on the same stuff. And, it, and you know, though technology and stuff has advanced, I mean, as a people, socially, we've taken a nosedive. People can't even talk to each other and disagree without turning it into a fight. I mean, I spoke with somebody on Facebook. We had differing opinions. And, I mean, somebody had said something about his thought was stupid or something, and he unfriended him on Facebook. And it's like, you know, why why people are so sensitive in today's day and age, I will never know. It doesn't really matter. But the point is, is, you know, when, when we're, we are aligning ourselves with God, we're not even wanting to engage in quarrels. My uncle Chuck from Southern California said one time, you know, he said, I, I really just hate confrontation. And, you know, back then, this was a few years ago, I'm thinking, oh, I can handle a confrontation. But as I matured in my faith, I began to understand, you know, I understand exactly what he means. I hate confrontation. I don't want to have confrontation. Sometimes it's extremely necessary. I mean, sometimes you have to really initiate it. And, you know, those things are few and far between. But again, back to the point, you know, things happen with us. We do get upset in some way, shape or form. And people are sensitive when you talk to them. There are situations where all you do is read scripture and people think that, man, all of a sudden, uh, you know, on one occasion I heard evangelist Mario Murillo say, you know, I was reading scripture and one guy had said something to one of the workers that he has, you know, like, I like this guy, but he's really harsh. And all, all he did was read out of the Bible, you know, so it's, it's one of those things where we're in a sensitive day and age. But, you know, again, when we align ourselves with God, we don't take things personally like that. We begin to see his will. We begin to see that the people that we may not like are people he's trying to call, people he's trying to get to. Jesus said to love our enemies, and that's not an easy thing. It's not an easy task. But, I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking if God is telling me to do something, I'm going to endeavor to find out how to do it or, or at least, you know, at least try to find out how. I, I'm going to do it. It's difficult. Oftentimes I'm like, I don't want to. You know, I can relate to Moses back when, you know, God was calling him to go to Pharaoh and he was saying, no, take, t tell my brother to go. You know, you can relate to stuff like that because, again, it's just, it's, it's real. And, and you want to be real with God. You, you don't want to act a certain way because nobody likes anybody phony. Things happen. You know, we, like I say, we don't, we don't necessarily do the right things or respond the right way when certain things come about. Excuse me. But we know who to go to every single time for every situation, whether we're up or down. God's there. You know, he wants to be that active person in our lives. He is the creator. Who better to go to? You know, it's good to talk to other believers and, and you know, to, again, Scripture says to minister to one another you know, your, our gifts and so forth. But man, that, that, that personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ is so essential to every bit of our living. And it's probably no coincidence that I'm talking about essentials at this moment, considering that's all we're allowed to go outside and get. <laughs> that was a joke. I hope that was funny. Um, but in all reality, in all reality, in all seriousness, God is essential for our entire lives. And, you know, in, again, in, in Psalm, the psalmist really, really convey that message. So there are highs and there are lows, especially when David is speaking. One of the highs 
when you know and, and so when we when we initially have our fears or our doubts or our anxieties they're there we go to god sometimes we're crying sometimes we're on our knees sometimes we're just totally confused or or just puzzled about something that you know we, we really go through that emotion for however long but then again when we realign ourselves back to god we get right we start thinking straight think about peter and and, and man how many times peter is brought up in this particular instance but when he got out of the boat and walked on the water toward jesus he was doing just fine while he was looking at jesus Scripture says he looked away, saw the wind or the storm in some texts, and became afraid. Now, you know, this is much like us. We are not, we are not all that different. Like you have pe people who call Tom Doubting Tom. Like, don't act like you don't doubt. Please don't call him that. You know, so just like Peter, we all have those instances of where we realign ourselves with God. We're walking. Suddenly we look away and boom, we start to crash. Why? Because we start to see things within our own limitations. We start to see things in our own power, in our own understanding. And we start to sink. Every time. When we realign ourselves, we're like David here in Psalm 27. One, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 118.6 The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. Psalm 23, 1-3 The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. God is our everything. And in a time like this, where a lot of you are not even at work right now, and I'm, you know, that's all unfortunate. I'm, I'm not making fun or anything. I'm, I'm just using this as an illustration. All, all of y'all who are not really active at work right now, especially, this is a fantastic time to get close to God, to get closer to God. If you already know the Lord, Get with him one-on-one. -on -one. Spend some good old quality time. Because I believe that this entire situation is not meant to be some pandemic, some total crazy chaotic outbreak. But I believe this is a time for the church to rise up in the name of Jesus. Lay hands on the sick. Each and every person, whoever is sick, whatever disease they have, and be healed in the name of Jesus. I believe that this is the time. I believe that circumstances like this are for his glory. I believe it is it is his will that people should come to know him. People should live and not die. And those of us who believe in that same gospel, which is the gospel, we can't afford to get involved in all this drama. We need to be active. This is this is the time. And mind you, every day is the time to really get right with God, to stay Focusing on his will and not focusing on what the enemy wants to create. Chaos and how are you going to pay this and how are you going to do that. God has already got that taken care of. And it is about time we start to really lean on that truth. And I mean trust that truth. Because I have gone through things before and I have struggled. I had to go down like I was just telling y'all a little bit ago with this custody battle. But thank Jesus, thank the Lord. In the end, I got full custody and they changed the venue. Courthouse is about five minutes away from me now. So I suffered a little while. As scripture says, you may suffer for a little while. The Lord might let that happen. But he will be there. And he'll take care of it. And he will get you back right where you need to be. But the testing of our faith produces authenticity. Produces a more genuine faith when we are tested. And he is. He is worthy of doing that to us, putting us in those situations. He doesn't make the bad thing come. That's not of God. 
but all of the stuff through it is meant to be for our good. It's meant, it's meant to be for us to, you know, be stronger, to be able to endure more. You go to the weight room. You do a lot of repetitions. You're increasing your endurance. And anybody who knows about repetitions, that stuff hurts. Sometimes it hurts more than lifting heavy weight. But we know that God is there at the end of it. So again, church, this is one of those things, you know, we do, we do make mistakes. Absolutely. The body of believers, you know, you hear people who say, oh, nobody's perfect. Man, you know what? Perfection is only based upon godly standards. Only. Okay, so if you're living a godly life, if your first and foremost desire is to do what the Lord wants you to do is to, to obey the will of God for your life first. Okay, so don't don't go around looking at other people talking about how well Martha needs to uh, John over there. He really, uh, uh. As soon as you get that thought, nope, uh, uh I need to focus on me. As soon as you get that thought about something, nope, nope, I need to make sure I know that I've got such and such to think about. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that. You take care of yourself first, and and no doubt. Will you be able to help others? That's why we don't judge our brothers. We don't judge our sisters. You know, there's a time for something like that. As church leaders, you got to expel the evil person from your church among you, if that's applicable to you. If you don't have that going on, praise God. You know, this is one of those things, again, you know, it's, it's just you come back to your center. It's easy to get off track and to look at the wind, look at the storm, but you want to bring yourself back to the Lord. And we are in a good, perfect position right now to get ourselves back in line with God. Some of us may, may have been walking with Him, may be walking with Him for, for a long time. But either which way, this is one of those times where we've got plenty of time to get right and to get, to get on that path with Him. And I believe as a church, as a whole, all of the body of believers, we really need to be more active in our faith. Really need to, to you know do what we're supposed to do I, I don't really know how to say it i sit here and i think about it and i'm almost dumbfounded you know we're this almost shows us that our faith is poor you know what are we doing different than the world folks you got to ask yourself what what is different than the world if you go to church, if you've been a believer all this time and suddenly, you know, during this time where, where you know, healing is needed or, or faith is needed and you, you're not showing up, what is that? You know, but I tell you, with, with me saying that, you can know and you can believe and you can fully, fully believe that God will forgive any, you know, unbelief, any doubting, any anything like that. Get yourself back on track. Go to him. Talk to him about all the things that you have a hard time with. And then come, come again to that understanding that his ways are so much higher than ours. Stop trying to understand everything. Scripture says, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. And then another scripture says that the steps of a man are the Lord's. How then can he understand his own way? Soak that up. That's the truth. He's got it all figured out. We don't. We aren't the ones that, you know, are in control. We got to remember that. Peter, as soon as he looked away, his own limitations, and we do the same thing. We don't want to do that. We want to be right in line with God just as we should be. For those of you out there who haven't received Jesus, maybe just thought about it or haven't ever thought about it, I'm inviting you now to receive Jesus. You can just declare right where you are that Jesus is Lord. He is the Son of God. He died, was buried, rose again, and ascended to heaven. I say to you, go out, be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Repent to the Lord for all that you've done wrong, and He will forgive you and you will begin a new life completely different from the life that you've had before and find a church 
begin to study the word. You know, again, I always like to tell people, don't just listen to us preach. Take the time to to find out for yourself what's real and what's not. At this time, I'd like to pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together, Lord. Father, I just ask that you would keep your hand upon all of us, all the church leaders at this time, that you would open our eyes, open our hearts, Lord, up to your word and everything that you have going on for us, Lord. I just pray that we would all be of like mind, reading and studying your word and preaching your word, again, all of like mind, and just absolutely doing it with no interpretation, but just as the Holy Spirit is ministering to us all. I thank you, Father, for new converts. I thank you for the miracles and the, and the wonderful things that are going to take place. I pray that we'd be a generation of people who have faith, of, faith in you and belief in the power that you have, Lord. I thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you all very much for watching. Again, I'm going to be starting a, a series in Romans here pretty soon. I hope that you stay tuned for that. And God bless you. Have a wonderful day.